Are you ready for that? Okay, here we go. So, if you enjoy gospel music, especially welcome tonight. Um, before we kick off tonight, though, since it's Christmas and uh, and since it's the season for um, for everybody joining in with Christmas carols, I'm going to hand over to M. Bolin here from Motivation by Music. Hello. And she's going to lead us in a Christmas carol. <laughs> um, so they've asked me to, to get you involved, do a little bit of a sing song. Are you up for that tonight? We're singing good news. Gospel music. We're singing good news, gospel music, we get excited, and very happy, yeah we get excited, we love to sing, move it to a clap, we're singing good news. As well, um, I'd like to welcome to the stage, though, the uh, founder of UGCY, Lorraine Wright, and the director of UGCY UK, uh, Edife Bambose. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Good. Okay. So, as Tom said, I am the founder of University Gospel Choir of the Year. Um, so, seven years ago, whilst I was in my gospel choir. I realized that we all had great talents, but no opportunity or no platform to go out there and showcase a positive message that really underpins what we sang. So every week, we'll come together, we'll rehearse, we'll train our vocal cords. Some of us didn't really have the greatest voices, like me. Um, share our stories on how the week had been, rehearse, um, organize our next performance. I loved it, was excited to always take part week in, week out, and really loved the powerful message that we sang, and I loved meeting new people. I did realize, however, that we had all this great talent, but we were confined to the walls of our universities. And oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive UGCY, we aim to build more gospel choirs in the universities in the UK and internationally, as Lorraine has champions, said. Champions of UGCY 2015, Leicester University Voices. Voce Gospel Choir. Ladies and gentlemen, uplifted voices.
What are you guys looking for in the finalists this year? When you were looking through the videos, what were you, what were you picking out? I want to hear some gospel songs that are a lot more challenging and complex. I want us to be going back to the real gutsy roots of gospel and getting some real bending of notes, some swells, some gut-wrenching stuff. That's what I want to hear this year. Doing something different than we've seen before, as Angie said, um, really getting to the roots of gospel and what it's really about um, musically. I think I would like to um, see a bit more attention to technique. I think breathing and using different tones and textures and dynamics, I think that will affect the way you sound overall, making sure there's attention to detail, making sure you're all pronouncing your words the same, that you are uh, blending, you know, listening to each other, not just in your section, but as a group, you know, a nice unison sound. And then when those harmonies come in, it's sweet, making sure you're bringing your vibrato at the same time and then you're singing straight, that kind of thing. So real attention to detail, that's what I want to see next year. That is the UGCY finals in March. The date is right here, March the 5th, 2016. Put that date in your diaries right now. So you guys have been with us from the beginning, literally from the start. Tell me about the journey. How do you think UGCY has developed over the years? How do you think the choirs have developed over the years? Has the competition got better? What do you think? Uh, it's definitely grown. I mean, as of anything that starts off, you know, you're going to start off smaller, there's going to be some teething issues, but I think each year we iron it out, you know, and it becomes a smoother operation. The quality of the choir, choirs get so much better, and people are really kind of taking it more seriously and really putting themselves into it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, just, it's still growing, and I think it'll continue to grow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's fantastic. Um, when I heard about it, it's something I really wanted to be involved in. Um, I think that from the first year till now, the bar has really raised every year and it's got better and better. And um, I'm really excited to see what 2016 is going to hold. Um, as I say, I wasn't able to be at the last one, but I heard it was amazing and I saw some of the performances. Um, so even from the year before that, it got better. And then this year, I know it's going to get better from seeing some of the audition tapes and stuff. I think people are really coming um, with their best. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Hi. Hi. From the start, I know Lorraine really wanted to make an impact in, in, in the universities in terms of spreading the gospel and, and having that presence there. And it's fantastic that this year we have 20 choirs who have auditioned for this, which means it's growing. More and more universities are getting to know about it and more and more universities want to be involved. And apart from the, the quality that's improving and the standard, the other things that are happening um, around the, the, the festival, the competition, is it, fantastic, or, you know, all the other bits of work that's going on. Um, within the community that the choirs are, are now doing themselves and that UGCY also a pioneering is fantastic uh, you know I think it's um, we, we're here for the journey I think we're going to be here for a while <laughs> awesome and I know that all three of you are from choir backgrounds and really involved in choirs so what do you think are the benefits of being a choir why are choirs important why are they great to have in university settings cool um well, yeah, speaking for myself, um, gospel music and gospel choir music has been very good to me personally. Um, I've learned a lot from being in the environment of being around different personalities, learning how to be around different personalities and stuff, but also in performance on stage and the interaction you are able to have with the audience. Um, there's something different about being in a choir as opposed to being a solo artist. Um, because you can often be on stage and feel like you're part of one big family, including the audience, not just the choir that you're with, do you understand? So um, it can, it's, it's very important for unity, um, bonding together with people in your section and people in the, the bigger choir as well. Um, the whole process going through rehearsing and practicing together, the ups, the downs, helping the, yeah, the discipline, helping the person next to you get their part right if they're not or if you're not really cutting it and the person helping you like there's so much that can be gained from it um and yeah just just the community it's, it, it can really the choir is probably the biggest social event i'm <laughs> going believe it or not um after a rehearsal i mean you can see now nobody wants to go home you see what i mean and that's what it's like every week no matter how many times you rehearse or whatever so yes yeah, it's, it's a fantastic thing definitely 
Stephanie, I want to ask you, what advice would you give to the soloists? I know you do a lot of solo work. So what advice would you give to the soloists that are getting ready for the 2016 competition? What advice would you give to them? I would say less is more. I say really learn your craft. Don't just, don't wing it. You know, rehearse, practice the song, learn the lyrics of the song, you know, ask yourself what is the song about so you can tell the story and be that kind of cherry on top to what the choir is doing as well, you know, to really kind of go on that journey together rather than it being two separate things. You're there together and you're there to tell a complete story, to paint a complete picture. So, um, you know, when you're learning the song, have that in mind, you know, don't over sing, let the choir have their time, then you have your time, but also know when to take it up. You know, but I always say start off small, start off simple, sing the melody. The melody is key. And then, you know, as the song grows, you grow the second verse of the bridge and at the end of the song, it's yours for the taking. And Andrea, what advice would you give to our choir directors? I know you've done a lot of choir directing work. So what advice would you give to the choir directors as they're preparing, as they're starting to think about song choices as well? I know you mentioned a bit about it earlier, but what advice would you give to them? Yes, song choice is absolute key. It's important that choirs are comfortable with the songs that um, they are singing for the competition, which means that they need to, to learn it early and then just rehearse and rehearse until it's sort of like second skin, that they're not thinking about, oh, my harmony is here and I have to go here and I have to do it. So they can just relax and enjoy the experience of singing and, as I said before, telling that story. That is key telling that story. That's what we hear about. That's what we want to do as artists. We want to share our story with somebody. And, and, and so choir directors have to be on point, first of all, to get all the stuff that Stephanie was talking about right, getting all the technique, the dynamics, you know, the, the blend, the pitching. In the early stages, you've got to work hard on that and make sure everybody is technically correct. And then the, the choir di director needs to lead them into the storytelling and enjoying the song and, and, and moving them towards that. So by the time they come on stage, it's second nature, and they take us on that journey with them. You know, it's about honesty. Performance is about honesty. Uh, it's about being vulnerable on stage, um, being together as a group and delivering that. So they have to do a lot of work, a lot of... Um, with the choirs I run, we do a lot of drama exercise in terms of getting people together and getting people out of themselves to be able to share that story. Yeah. I am here at the UGCY 2016 launch with MOBO award winning rapper Triple O. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, my dear. How art thou? I'm well, I'm, I'm well. <laughs> I don't really know anything older yeah, to kind of say. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just, we'll, just, we'll just leave it there, we'll leave it there, we'll leave it there. Right. <laughs> Did you enjoy the evening? You no, know, it was absolutely amazing. Like, I'm so excited about what UGCY are doing. Um, I've been following the whole competition for a couple of years now, and then had the opportunity to perform at last year's one, which was absolutely amazing. Um, but to see the, the interest um, and how people are really starting to appreciate the foundations of gospel music, because when you look at gospel music, it's like, well... Yeah, it started in the church and started with this sound and then it just kind of grew from there. So to, to see um, this style of music being celebrated within our community on an, and on a nationwide scale, it's so amazing. So um, I just literally hope and pray that this continues to grow and grow and grow. More people get involved, more universities get involved, more churches get involved. That's what we need. We need um, Christians to really come together and support this, come out in numbers, come out to the show. So it's, it's, I'm looking forward to the, to the event on, on, on the 5th and, and I know it's going to be an amazing night. Hi, Anu. Hi, I should mention doing? that she's like the choir director extraordinaire. <laughs> One of the finalists of choir, Gospel Choir of the Year. Yes, that's true. Um, 2014. 2014. Yeah. Also, going all... Wait, you were in America earlier this year. We won an award as we well. Were, we won two, yeah, we won two awards. Um, we won Choir of the Year and um, I won Choir Director of the Year, which is very nice. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And I know this week you were at number 10 Downing Street. We were. We were. Yeah, what are you up to there? Well, um, we went to sing for the Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of crazy but cool at the same time as they were turning on the Christmas lights we were there singing right so you are literally the perfect person for me to talk to about being in choirs because you've done so much choir stuff so why did you get into choirs why what do you love about choirs what's your experience been like 
being in a choir or oh. directing a choir? Well, I, I, I love choirs. I mean, the first thing is that you get to sing with other people, so you're not on your own. Yeah. That collective is really, really important, and I love that. If you're in a good choir, you become like family. You know, all the girls, they're all like my girls. I like having 11 girls <laughs> at my age. Can you imagine? <laughs> Some who are older than me as well. Um, but, you know, the sound that you can make together, I mean, they still take my breath away. Seriously, I mean, so we're still on stage and I, I hear they start to sing and I just think, wow, you know, uh, you know, and I sing with them all, every week. So um, that collective, that spirit, the blending of voices, the coming together is what really sets a choir apart from, from other types of, of gospel outfits or, or singing outfits. Yeah. yeah. Now, Reaper's Choir have got an amazing sound, such a beautiful blend. Thank you. As a choir director, how do you achieve that? What advice would you give to our choir directors, our university choir directors, in terms of achieving that unity in sound, in, um, achieving that great blend? What advice would you give to them? Um, I think you have to pay attention to the details. So you've got to really get the basics right. So firstly, you've got to work really hard on the breathing and then work hard on the blending, which means working hard on the listening and just bringing all those things together. If you really pay attention to how everyone sounds, a choir, being in a choir is quite different to singing as a solo. I always tell my girls, when you're doing solo, you be as unique and as individual as you possibly can. But when you come to singing in a choir, no voice is sticking out, not one. No individual sounds. Everyone's got to sound exactly the same. Literally imitate the person next to you in your section, then as a section imitate the other sections so that you just sound really really blended and you come together as one yeah. and um, as the choirs are preparing for next year's show yeah. what advice would you give to them as a collective about because I know you've performed on many great stages so what advice would you give to them about the performance itself about preparing for it um, I think we had some really really good bits of advice today from the judges earlier on Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Just keep practicing. And I think it's important to be consistent in practice. I think some um, groups or choirs tend to only practice for the events. Don't do that. We practice all year round, come what may. We'll have a holiday at certain times, we'll have a break. But even when we've got, if, even if we've got nothing in the diary, we'll still be practicing. You know, because you always, always, always can improve, always get it tight up, always keep working. And, and then, you know, once you do that, pay as much attention to the, to the performance, the ministry side of it, as you are to the actual vocals. Because it's not just your voice that will project the message, it's also your appearance your expression, your eyes, your face, your smile will really deliver the message as much as the sound does. So it's an all-rounded thing. Yeah. Consistency and, you know, um, it, it's not just one thing, it's, it's the, whole, the whole thing, being holistic about it, yeah. It's good advice, great advice. So why do you think people should come out to UGCY 2016? Why should they support these university choirs? Oh, well, because they're great. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a really easy one. The actual event is great. Um, it's great being a part of a choir. It's great being in university and it's great being a part of a choir. So they're a, a fantastic combination. So just getting out to the actual event, supporting um, what the choirs are doing and just enjoying what they've put together. And as we've heard, the standard keeps increasing every year so no doubt 2016 is going to get even higher yes. thank you so much Anu thank, thank, thank you thank you for having thank me you. now if you know UK gospel you will have heard of Raymond and Co one of the pioneers of gospel music in the UK as we know it and I'm here with him what a privilege thank you so much for coming today no problem it's been a privilege and honor to be here thank you so now you are a choir man I know you are a choir man. Yes, I am. So I'm going to ask you the choir questions. Mm -hmm. So you've done directing and yep. you've been in choirs. and yep. I know you would call Raymond and Co a group, uh -huh. but I guess some people might call them a choir as well. Yeah, we've been described as like a carol. Um, we, we, we're a group, but we, we, we have utilised that gospel choir sound, big sound, vibrato and all that kind of stuff, transposes and modulations. Da, 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 da. So yeah, very much so. Yeah. So what advice would you give to our choirs as they're getting ready for UGCY 2016, for the directors, for the musicians, for the singers? What advice would you give to them on preparing for performing on such a big stage? Well, first of all, I believe when you're singing gospel music, whether choir or soloist, your heart is very important. So really be focused. Um, unity amongst the choir. 
um, singing with one voice, which means that to sing with one voice, you have to listen to the person next to you. Um, learning how to follow direction. If you have a choir director, you might not like everything they tell you to do, but do it anyway <laughs> with all your heart. Yeah, um, And be energetic as well. We're in a time where everybody wants something that's hot. They want peri-peri hot. They want a hot music. They want a hot blip. We want to talk about that. Yeah, so don't be cold. Be very vibrant. Be energetic. Also be expressive. There's a saying, actions speak louder than words. So your body language, if you're saying, I believe I can fly and you're going, I'm not going to believe you. I need to see your hands going up and down. Yeah, so be really expressive. And also listen to as much gospel music as you can in your private time. Yeah, you are what you eat. So absorb that sound, yeah, and it will be easier to get it out of yourself. Wow, awesome advice. Awesome. Oh, great. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> so, B, what do you love about choirs? What, do you, what made you kind of start Raymond & Co? What made you start a group? What makes you continue to work with choirs to this day? What is it about choirs that you love? Well, amazingly so, um, I actually started a youth choir, yeah? Mm. And um, the youth choir was a part of the adult choir at my church, and that caused a bit of a rift. <laughs> so, basically, my pastor said, you know what, why don't you start a group? So, that's how I started the group. But, of course, we maintain that choir sound. Mm. And even to this day, I have my other group, Isaiah Raymond and Friends, and we yes. very much go for that choir sound. If you YouTube us, um, you can look up Is Your All on the Altar, Isaiah Raymond and Friends. There's nine of us, but we sound like a million of us. <laughs> yeah, um, I love choirs, you know, because it's, it's a wonderful way to make godly friendships, godly connections. It's a wonderful way to hone your voice. If you're not the greatest singer, but you want to go to that next level, you can sing in a choir, learn harmonies, learn how to sing in unity, learn how to be strengthened by others, learn how to give good advice. Um, I was like one of the choir counsellors. Yeah, <laughs> You're in your section and like when stuff ain't going right, you pick up that something's not too right with someone. How's it going? You pat them on the back and you, yeah, it's a great way to have a sense of community with the same belief. So, man, I, you know what? I feel like starting another choir. That's the truth. You, you need to start another choir. <laughs> <laughs> pray for me, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> we need, uh, I, I love Raymond and Co. Thank you. I love Thank Raymond you. and Co. So like, Raymond and Co has a special part place in my life. Oh, Obviously, because you came to my school yeah, yeah, in North yeah. London when I was yeah, younger. So, yeah. and that was my kickstart into gospel music. Wow. And here I am today. Here she is today. Amazing. That's what gospel choirs can do for you. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Um, so you've been to our shows. Yep. What do you think? What do you think of the YouTube Listen, show? let me tell you something. That's what brought me out tonight. I came to the show, myself and Gillian from Raymond & Co, and we loved the show. Seeing all these different choirs, different cultures, young people, all their little swag, different versions of their swag. That's a dress sense for you that don't get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really good. And it, the fact it was in a professional building, um, there were so many people there, it was really good. And I thought, you know what? I said, I want to go to this event again. I even filmed it on my camera, took it home so I could play it. There was one of the choirs, I can't remember which one, but they did, he is alive, he is risen. Nottingham. One, Nottingham, <laughs> listen, listen. I'm bored, in case you don't know, yeah? But not gonna let my hair grow back, right? <laughs> listen, Dave, listen. We, I was next to Jillian, we, we was like nudging each other, we were laughing, clapping, I was swinging the camera myself and just acting like a fool. Yeah, yeah man, it was, it, oh man, it was a really, I would, I tell you, anybody, if you like gospel music, go to this event, get behind it. It's such a wonderful and creative way to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love it. Awesome. That's Isaiah Raymond for you. You heard it from, look, this is the one of the pioneers, right? And if he says you need to come out, you need to come out. Thank you. you. To come out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.